Microsoft Word is a word processing program and basically what that means is that you can write and store your text within the program. To open up the program, go ahead and click on the Start button and find it, and then click on it to open it up. But instead of doing that every single time, I added it as a shortcut to my desktop that I can open up with a double click or edit down below on the taskbar that you can open it up in a single click like I did with Excel 2016. And if you want to learn how to do that, then I recommend that you watch my Windows training video on shortcuts. In any case, let's go ahead and hover over. You can see that arrow pointing to the big W. That arrow means that it's a shortcut to the program. And when I hover over it, it gives me a pop-up telling me the purpose of the program, which is to create beautiful documents, easily work with others, and enjoy the read. I'm sold. Let's go ahead and double-click to open it up. And it takes me to the Start screen, where I can go ahead and start working on a recent document over on the left-hand side, or use one of the templates over on the right-hand side. First of all, the most recent documents here, when I hover over it, gives me a pop-up, the address where the document is, or where it was last when I was working on it, because it could have been moved. And if it has been moved, if it doesn't open up because it says it's no longer there, and then you don't want this there, go ahead and give it a right-click, and you get a list of options, and the least of which, which is to remove it from the list, and it's gone. And then if you want to keep it there, so when you're opening up a lot of documents, because it's not the most recent one, that it rolls off, then go ahead and hover over it, and then click on the push pin. And you can see now it's pinned, so it'll always be there, no matter how many other documents you've recently opened up, until you go ahead and unpin it, in which case, if it's not the most recent one that you opened up, it'll start bumping down until it rolls off, in which case, if you want to open it up, then you got to go hunt for it, click on Open Other Documents. And then over to the right, you got a list of all the templates, the least of which is the blank template. But if you want to start with something that's already been worked on, that you want to spend a little time making it yours by editing it or changing a few items in it, you can go ahead and find a template. Some of them are fancy, like this one. If you're like, hmm, I like that. I'm creating a flyer. Click on it. Replace some of the text with something that's proprietary to your event. And then save it. But to keep it simple, we'll scroll back up and click on blank document. And so that's what's going to happen every time you open up Microsoft Word, is it'll take you right to the start screen, unless you want to change that. So when you open it up, it takes you right to a blank template here, and I'll show you how you can do that in the next training video. But once you open up a template, either the blank template or any other template, this is the default view in Word. And let's go ahead and go over it by starting up at the top and going from left to right, and then top to bottom. First of all, in the upper left-hand corner, you have what's called the Quick Access Toolbar, it's a tiny toolbar because you only have one, two, three commands on it. And it's called the Quick Access Toolbar because you can quickly access anything on it in a single click. Like this command, all you have to do is go ahead and click on it and it'll save the document. And you can see in the pop-up, you can use the shortcut keys, Control S. And I'll show you how you can customize that by adding more commands or removing commands from the Quick Access Toolbar in a later training video. And then over to the right, you have the title bar has the title of the document, I mean document 4, that's generic. When you save it, you can go ahead and rename it and call it whatever your document's about, like if it's about pumpkin pie, mm, that's a good recipe. And then you can go ahead and rename it and call it My Tasty Pumpkin Pie. And then you have the dash, and that's the name of the program, in case if you forget, you're in Word. And then you got some other options, you can sign in to the cloud. You also have the ribbon display options, we'll cover that. And then the window operating options for this window, like to minimize the window, restore down, or close out. And if you want to learn more about the window operations, you can watch my Windows training videos on that. And then down below that, you have a list of all commands on what's called a ribbon. And it's this big, long thing here. Like, for example, you've got the Home tab, the more popular commands. And when you come down here, you have within that tab, Groups and it's separated by these thin lines here. And like on the clipboard group, you can cut, copy, and paste. And if you want to work on the font, like when you type in some text, if you want to change the font type, like instead of Calibri, maybe Times New Roman, the font size, make it bold, italics, underline, change the color, that's the font group in between these two lines here. And if there's more commands than what it can squeeze in there or commands that aren't as popular, then you've got in the lower right hand corner this little tiny arrow which is called the expandable dialog box button because when you click on it it expands and opens up a new window and for the most part it contains all the same commands that you see here within the group in addition to these other commands here that well aren't as popular or not as used as often like the strike through effect 
notice down below in the preview, it's got body that when I check it, it puts a strike through through it. So if that's what you want to see, then go ahead and select it, click OK, and whatever text you have selected, it'll have a strike through through it. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. And so that's the Home tab, the more popular commands, broken up into groups, so you can recognize which group you want to work in, like for your font, paragraphs, or styles. You have the other tabs here that are broken up. Instead of just working on the text, you can insert things, like what type of things? Well, it's broken up into groups, like tables, illustrations, that includes pictures, charts, shapes, or you can do videos, links, comments, and others. Now, there's going to be some tabs that you won't see now that will come in later on, like when you're working on a picture. It'll have a tab up here on the ribbon called the Contextual Related tab that's related to what you're working on. So it's got some proprietary commands that will only work when you're working on that object or that image. And that will pop up for you to go ahead and select and click on to be able to see some of the commands you can work with when working on, like for example, an image or a picture. Now all of these tabs here will keep you in what's called the front stage view, working on the blank document down below, except for the first tab, the file tab, that when you click on it, it wipes it clean, and you go behind the scenes or what's called backstage. Think of it like a theater. You have a bunch of things going on behind the scenes to make the front stage look good or operable when the actors are playing out their parts. So behind the scenes, you've got options. Options where you can go ahead and change, well, the look of your environment. So if you don't want the top bar here, let me go back, which by the way, if you want to go back to the front stage, you can click on that back arrow. If you want the top bar, or the environment not to be in blue, you want it to be in white, or see what other colors there are, you can go ahead and change that with the options. As well as other things, when you click on the File tab, you can go ahead and print, share it, export it, things that aren't directly related to what's in the document that you're working on, but the way that you want to handle the file, or to be able to customize your environment, or even, like I said, to print it off. Let's go ahead and click on the back arrow to go back, and that's the file tab. When you go back, it goes back to the last tab that you were on before you went backstage to the file tab. And the default tab or the home tab, the more popular of the commands is the home tab. And then down below that, well, you may not have it turned on, but I've got my horizontal and vertical rulers. If I want to see those, you can go ahead and click on the view tab. And so what we're looking at here, the default view is the print layout view, which if it doesn't include the rulers, you can go ahead and go to the show group and you can see it's checked. If I uncheck it, it's disappeared. Check it, it brings them back. Let's go back to the home tab and then down below that you have your blank document here where you can go ahead with the cursor flashing just start typing in your text. And then you can click and drag the scroll bar down so you can go down to the bottom of the document and see how much room you have before you go to the next page. Now how many pages are in this document? Well, you can look down below in the status bar and you can see right here, let me get the pointer out of the way because that's annoying, you can see just below it, I'm on page one of one, so I only have one page within the document. And that's the status bar, that in addition to the number of pages that you have within the document, the section that you're in, and also the number of words, and you can hover over these others, like check for proofing errors and recording a macro. And then over to the far right on the status bar, you have the different view options. The default is this one right here, the print layout, as we saw in the view tab. You can also do read mode and also web layout, and we'll talk about those later. And then you have the zoom feature. Like if you notice up here in the font group, you have the font size, which is 11. If you want it to be that size when it prints off, but you want to be able to make it bigger on your screen here, then why not go ahead and click and drag this to zoom in. And I'm now zoomed in at 200 and, well, let me move my mouse, 292%. So, wow, I'm really in there, aren't I? And I can go ahead and click on the Zoom dialog box, the 292, to bring it up and say, look, I don't want to zoom that close, so I want to go back out. You can go ahead and change it here, or just go to Page Width, and it just fits the size of the screen here. So when I click Okie Dokie, it's at 114%, not exactly 100% because my screen's just a little bit bigger, or the resolution to fit my screen. So when I click Okie dokie, we're back to where we started.